everyone, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. I got my position back. <laughs> Introduction master extraordinary. This is James Cork, and with me I have Norman Sanso. Blah, I'm here to suck your blood. No, that's a different kind of empire. Blah, I'm sparkly. Ah, uh, I prefer the first one, Norman. No, we don't talk about that kind of vampire. An awesome brownie reviewer, Silver Quill. It is not by my hand that I have returned to the realm of the living. <laughs> Now you see, Norman, that's how you do it. Talking about Castlevania, that, that's a much better thing than that other... Th- 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 that thing that is not even a book. I, know, I don't know what you're talking about. And today, we are going to be reviewing... Night. Is, is the title Night of the Living Apples? I Night of the Apples? So, give me a second. Um, Night of the Apples. Now, you see, it's because Handy Pro and Katie Cook are the only ones that put titles before the start of their comics, so it's easy to name them, but the other artists and writers, they don't do that. <laughs> and it's confusing in the long run. <sighs> but, yes, we're going to talk about Night of the Apples, which is a two-parter comic, issues number 30 and 31, right? Or no, 32 and 33. Oh, my comicsology app got it wrong. Written by Tom Saylor, with art by Tony Flix, and colors by Heather Breckel. So, in this comic, uh, uh, one of the fragments from the war between Nightmare Moon and Celestia falls into the uh, Sweet Apple Lakers orchard, and its influence turns all the apples into living sentient beings. And the only way that the main six have to deal with this is to recur to uh, uh, an old foe. And that's as much as I can tell bef- without actually spoiling anything. So, um... Now that I'm back in the driver's seat, what do you guys think of this comic? I'm not going to go, again, inverted alphabetical order because ha 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 ha. I like that. So, uh, so Silver, what do you make of this comic? What do you think of it? Uh, well, the first half is a parody of a parody, which cancels itself out. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes was just this great cult classic absurdity. Poking fun at, at, disaster movies and just having a good time. You can't really recapture that if you're trying to do a spin on it. It's like if ponies tried to, uh, if, if the main six tried to do saving private pinky, they'd make, they'd make it some sort of satire of a very serious movie. You can't satirize a movie that's already making fun of itself unless it does it really poorly. So the first half is just sort of an eye roll, and I'm thinking they yeah, really shouldn't have made this a two-parter. The second part gets better, but at the same time, I'm still thinking they didn't need to make this a two-part. The main six are finally doing some action, and it throws an interesting concept, uh, concept but by gosh, you lost me with the first half, and the second half just couldn't pull it all together. It is a case of two different part, two parts being way too different in tone and execution. What about you, Norman? What do you think? Well, I I was okay with the idea and concept. The cover art by Andy Price was amazing, where he drew six different type of vampire cliches that were out there with the main six, with Nosferatu, right. Dracula. Who else was there? Uh, Rainbow Dash was Kiefer Sutherland uh-huh. in uh, in uh, the Old Boys or whatever it's called that movie. I haven't watched yeah, that. So but, there, there's, yeah, so you know, like the concept was amazing. I think we got spoiled with the covers that were shown. Like I think that got us. So we kind of were spoiled. Like okay, we got this, and then technically we will see um. Uh, the flutter bats or the bat ponies again. So yay, awesome! But well, we'll have to wait until issue two to yeah, see that. But yeah, yeah, but, I, I, yeah, I understand. So the the idea, the concept of the story where a meteor from space with the embodiment of evil comes down to Earth and landing on the apple field, transforming all the apples into sentient beings was interesting, and the whole town being invaded by apples. Technically, the life fuel of Ponyville because of Applejack's business. So that's ironic. <laughs> so yay. And I, I don't know, I mean, it's kind of fun, but it gets really... How do, how do I put this? It's funny, but they take it too seriously. 
especially the part where the apples were burning the town. I guess that's my problem with the comic. Uh, it's not so much that it takes itself seriously with the whole conflict and all that, because, yeah, they, they, when the apples start taking over the town and everything, it does look like it's the end of days and all that, but so it was with the uh, attack of the killer tomatoes and cl- uh, killer clowns from outer space. Like, w- when it comes to parodies, this comic wasn't actually going all that out of the way uh, when it comes to uh, making an homage for it. But then mm-hmm. it comes to the end of the second issue, and they have the whole... The end of the second issue is the one that ruins everything, to be honest with, to be honest with you. The one that I think that breaks the, the, this whole two-parter is because they have, no, let's be good, let's be great, let's be friends. That, that was already ruined in the first one where the good apple's already there. Mm. And I thought, this is completely unnecessary, you don't need to go that. Ah, but then they do, and it's, it's really, really disappointing. Ah, but what can you do? You are reminded here that this is a kid's book, a kid's comic book, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh well. So, we kind of already gave away a lot of details about the comic, actually. I'm not sure how much we spoiled it, but. Not much, really. Uh, from now on, from now on, we are really going to spoil the hell out of the comic. We're gonna talk about everything, so if you haven't read it, uh, stop now, go give it a read, and then come back to us. But from now on, it's spoiler country, so be careful. Like I mentioned, we start on Sweet Apple Lakers. Uh, well, we start with the backstory, talking about how the battle between Celestia and Nightmare Moon ended with the fragments of that fight drifting in space until they fall onto uh, Equestria. Actually, we see Equestria from the distance, and it does kind of look like Earth, maybe? No? Looks a little jagged in my eyes. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of <laughs> it does. logical. It's very polygonal. Mm-hmm. Very polygonal. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna debate about the how Equestria looks no, in like space, but it's logical like, that it's green and blue because it's covered in water and they have lush green spaces of green. So the apple, the, the and the the a meteor falls into the in the middle of Sweet Apple Acres or next to one of the apple trees, and the apples immediately uh, start moving out of their own volition. <laughs> Poor Applejack gets trapped in the apples. <laughs> Poor pony. It's uh, either too many apples or not enough apples that she's always suffering. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't take them too long until they um they go to Sweet Apple Acres and see that the apples have been kidnapped and taken over by a race of sentient apples. Being commanded by one called, very uh, appropriately called, Bad Apple, isn't it? Yeah, it's an apple with an evil mustache. Naming conventions in Equestria. <laughs> It is funny to see the ponies running for the hills. Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle get captured. Mm. And Scootaloo says, don't worry about us. Bring back help. And Sweetie Belle's just like, yeah, worry about us a little. <laughs> I just love Sweetie Belle. She's the, she's the pony who's always like, that pen. That, that pen looks like, mm, awesome. That's why I love her. Although what I find weird is in the panel where Twilight's telling everyone to get back to town and they're running, their pose looks more like they're stopping than running. If they were running, the legs would be more towards the back and their and their bodies leaning forward, but they're leaning back. Uh, I'm guessing it's a trot motion. Well, Pinkie Pie is just Pinkie Pie, so yeah, but I, I think it's the trot motion of moving forward. Oh, but that's just it. When you trot, your legs are moving forward to back. This is them putting all the momentum before them to stop. A minor thing, but little things can take you out of the moment. The pose also, it's very weird, yeah. Besides, they're also acting so terrified of these apples when, as I recall in Swarm of the Century, Fluttershy dealt with this problem very easily. Step. Swoosh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, the horror. Oh, the it horror. It is true, though. Also, she looked really evil when killing that apple. <laughs> oh, yeah, so so demonic to feed a parasprite. <laughs> Deep down, she knew what she was bringing. <laughs> oh, she did now. She's the beast master after all. <laughs> but it is funny how the apples take over Ponyville in like pretty much an entire day. Yeah. Doesn't take too long. Oh. Uh, apparently, not even Princess Luna is able to help because she's there with the doctor trying to fence off the apples. But no, it's 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 pretty quick. And Mayor Mayor, with less and spineless as she is, she gives the the she gives the. This, she signs the surrender agreement to the apples. 
Well, James, nobody expects the Apple Inquisition. The Apple Inquisition. You know, one person on Equestria Daily Forums commented that maybe the Luna panel was supposed to be uh, in the future when they invade Canterlot, except there's Time Turner. There's a there's a Ponyville cottage in the background. Mm -hmm. Luna's just there. And so I can only assume she's been subdued and being held off screen somewhere, off panel, I guess. Oh. Uh, having Luna in this panel just breaks everything. Well, it goes against what we'll hear later. Mm. Oh, there's Babs too, don't forget. It is clear that the that they're the royals, they know what's going on, and they know that there is, well, maybe they don't know what's going on, but they know that something's up. So, yeah, they keep up oh. Luna as well, off screen. And Flash is there. Yep, Flash. Just, it's just sort of a thing now. Flash is there. That really sums up his entire movie career. Oh. Flash is He's there. there. I Honestly speaking, I can't wait for the Friendship Games. It's going to be fun to see what they do with Flash. <laughs> nothing! <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> hey, one can hope. Vincent Tong is an awesome guy. Come on. Yeah, okay, he's an awesome guy, but that doesn't mean that the characters he plays are gonna be awesome. We're talking about Flash Sentry. We need to focus back on the comic. Like, back to the comic. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, it's, we're, we're kind of like going fast through it, but to be honest, uh, I think we're going fast through it because there is really not much meat going here. It's just, uh, there is a lot of filler. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and, uh, we reached the part where uh, the apples are planning on ta starting to take over other places. They're throwing their sentient apples with their catapults. <laughs> They're telling everybody to build catapults. And there is kind of a resistance movement going on. Uh, they all uh, gather together in the f house that is the furthest in Ponyville, which is, of course, Flutterside's cottage. Mm -hmm. Pinkie Pie is wearing a beret and a scarf. She's taking the whole French resistance thing a bit too literally. Uh, but you know, I, I do highly enjoy this because of, uh, what you might call this continuity. <laughs> We're in Fluttershy's basement with a lot of yarn. So this is a callback from the French, no, from the. Yeah, micro you're right. The, the, yeah, the Fluttershy micro. I completely, I didn't even notice. You're right. Look at that. There's the yarn. Mm -hmm. Huh. Interesting. So I, I, I do appreciate this because it's continuity. Oh, hey, hey you owe me a quarter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but, but where are all her intricate, uh, knitted statues? No comment. In the, it, maybe they are behind that one door that is, uh, you see in one of the panels, there is kind of like a little door. Oh, that one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her animal friends, maybe that's where the, the, the chamber of, uh, knitted oddities is. Uh, Chamber oh. of Secrets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what happened after this, Nguyen? It's that they decide to uh, throw an inf uh, send an infiltrate into the apple camp. Uh, by turning uh, her? Into an apple. <laughs> and by her, you mean Applejack, right? That's the most logical reason. Like, Applejack is apple, you know? Yeah. This is kind of a weird thing. Uh, Twilight says that Pinky is better at sneaking, even though we've seen that's not true. And getting to places she su she shouldn't, which we know is true. Mm -hmm. And then she says, let's be honest, she's closer to a vegetable than you are, Applejack. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow, Twilight. I mean, Backhanded wow. Comment. That's rather mean-spirited. That's not a word. <laughs> oh. Though, you know what? I think that they, they could have worded it better because... They, they should have said, Applejack, you are the element of honesty. You cannot lie yourself out of a paper bag. Yeah, but you that's you, just you are honest. not the right. You are not the right. Yeah. But like taking a page out of your book, Applejack, you have no idea how to lie. And even when you lie, you suck at it. Mm -hmm. So, no, you are not going to go there. We're going to send Pinky Pie. No, Forget about it. I think the only reason why this is one of the other reasons that Twilight is sending Pinkie Pie is because, well, she went on a sneaking mission with her once. It ended up well. Well, it, it really didn't. Pinkie was not very big on sneaking. Well, yeah, she wasn't very big on sneaking. She was, she, she sucked at it. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing, man. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> oh, well. 
But as Twilight doesn't have to work that much because he turns the already half vegetable Pinkie Pie into an apple pie, uh, Pinkie Pie is infiltrates into the uh, Sweet Apple uh, Lakers uh, barn, and there she finds Spike and uh, Good Apple apparently, who is the the who is the the good twin, the good half of Bad Apple. Here they explain that because of uh, the battle between Celestia and Nightmare Moon, Bad Apple is what's left of uh, Nightmare Moon's influence, and Good Apple is what's left of Celestia's good influence, or something. I don't know. They 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 do mention that, don't don't they? I don't remember. Did they? I think that's what logic. Sh- that's what logic should dictate, though. Well, later Celestia will say that it's the good of both sisters, although that might just be her sharing the credit. This probably had the best jab of the whole comic. As Pinky can't open the lock to free Spike, uh, Good Apple says you only a true apple can do it. So Pinky says only apples can use apple products? That seems really <laughs> limiting to me. <laughs> uh, be sure to download iOS 9 soon. <laughs> but at least apple products work. Zing! Yo! Hey, Android is a very, very good system. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, hey, hey, just look for Dragon Ball's endorsement. Cell needed androids to become perfect, but androids would have destroyed the world. <laughs> True that. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. So, anywho. So, yeah, Pinkie Pie goes back to the, um, goes back to the main six after she's kind of like being caught or not, uh, by, uh, by, uh, <laughs> by trying to free both Spike and Good Apple. And, as the spell is trying to, is starting to like wear off, uh, she just bounces away, and one of the apples is like, "Did you see her tail?" And the other one is like, "Man, don't be so serious. <laughs> Can somebody explain me the joke? Because I don't get it." It's supposed to be sexist, but mm, I still don't get it. <laughs> yeah. ch- checking out a lady's tail. Yeah. Ah, better, better. Really? Is that it? Yep. She uh, she grows a tail. <laughs> and so they say, hey, did you see a tail? Uh, I mean, that that's the core problem here. Oh, uh, we need someone else. Who who was it last week that helped us with this? Oh, yeah, we need uh, time. I, ha- I have a very bad feeling about this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. See, the seeds of dissent have been sown. It's funny how Pinkie Pie arrives to the to the main six. They're still having the leaves on her head. Mm. Um, you can see them there briefly for like one panel. Mm. And that's when, when Twilight is like, hang on a minute, we, there is no other way for us to defeat these apples other than by summoning none other than Flutterbat. Yes, because there is no other way to, to, to solve this problem. Yeah, but before that, I, I just need to point out another continuity oh. thing because we got what? the cats from the Discord and Zakura, no, the Fluttershy and, um, Zakura micro. No, the Fluttershy and Discord micro. No, wait a minute. That was a very confusing. <laughs> I Friends know, right? <laughs> Friends forever. So, you have yeah. that one. Those cats are there. I'm gonna call them Billy and Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> They're there. <laughs> like the protagonists of Double Dragon? <laughs> yeah. Billy and oh, Jimmy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and so, this is really awesome. Continuity. Awesome. But it, we really are going through this at, at breakneck speed because there's not a lot of substance to it. It's like, oh, apples are attacking. And the weird thing is they're not even playing up the humor all that much. Mm-hmm. Twi- I, I have this image of Twilight and company getting ready to brawl with this apple horde, say, we could take these guys. Look at them. Next panel, they're all locked in a cage mm-hmm. with this sort of, how did that happen look on yeah. their faces? Yeah, that would be funny. But they're taking this a tad too seriously in terms of – well, okay, I do like the serious nature of this comic. Like, okay, if we were invaded, okay, this is our plan. So this is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to escape and whatnot. And since we have Fluttershy here, she used to become a vampire bat. So now we can use that to our advantage. Like, yeah. So this is really interesting. Yeah, but, well, this is what happens when you have a comic based on a B-movie plot. Because that, this is the story of a B-movie this is the, 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 it has the substance of, of the substance of a B movie. It doesn't have the tone of a B movie though. Mm-hmm. Um, because there is, a, when you have something like this, you need to be like, a, uh, hell, unless you are Quentin Tarantino, you cannot squeeze a serious story or at least a compelling story 
out of a, a B movie, uh, 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 something that is based on on B movie undertones. Like uh, he did, he did it great with both Pulp Fiction and Death Proof and Django Unchained. But this is not it. This takes itself way too seriously. This is I don't know where they were trying to do to go with this one. It is not. It's not entertaining enough. It's not cheesy enough, and it's way too long. Like Silver said at the beginning of the review, this could have been a one-issue kind of comic. You don't need two issues out of this. Kind of, but honestly speaking, the the tone, the whole feeling of it, we would have been cheated out of a proper resolution if it was a one-issue comic. But from the very beginning of the comic... I think our expectation from the very beginning were skewed because of the ending here. But I would have preferred that they tried something. Like they kind of told the story in a way where the apples were taking over and the ponies were fighting back. Like legitimately fighting back. Eh, but we the, the fighting part is in issue two. So yay. I have this image of Big Macintosh eating with a half-eaten apple screaming in his grasp oh, wow. as, he, as he chews with a warrior's hardened expression and a oh. single tear rolls down his cheek. <laughs> nee, 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 nee. For when the apple turns. Wait, James, uh, hurry up to the conclusion of issue one. Or the... um, well, one last thing is that I love that panel at the end of issue issue one. That that is great. I I am just so happy to see Flutterbat again. Yeah, she looks so cool. You it's and such a every good design. other you and every other brony who loves the bats. The art by Tony Flicks, he is so good at drawing Flutterbat and getting the best out of it because that looks so cool. I mean, it's, yes, that's neat. I want to have that hanging on my wall. I love that. She, the, the Flutterbat here looks awesome. And pissed off. Mm, mm, mm. Well, it's, it's Flutterbat. She always looked pissed off. Mostly because <laughs> people kept shining lights in her face. Mm-hmm. But then we get to learn what Twilight does when she turns her friend yeah. into a monster. On issue 33, this is fun. Uh, you guys remember Hannibal? <laughs> so Twilight's plan is to transform her friend into a monster, then bind and gag her. The amount of slash fiction you could get from just this panel is overwhelming. <laughs> yes, yes it is. And I'm ready yes, to read all is. of them. Seriously, Twilight, I'm worried about you. <laughs> but seriously, though, don't you do that to all of your friends? I haven't done that to all of my friends, right? Guys who are not binded and tied to my in my basement right now. <laughs> Ooh, we're, we're learning a lot about you, James. I just do it to special friends. <laughs> Hello, fairies. <laughs> <sighs> oh, my gosh. It puts the, <laughs> the lotion in the basket or else it gets the house again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, all gagging and bounding and binding and, and tying down as high. Uh, what Twilight does is she, first she sends, the, no, she doesn't even send the Cutimer Crusaders out. She leaves them there as she takes the spell that she used on her friends to turn them into breezes and turns them all into bum ponies. All with their own different names that they will use to refer to each other from their own. So we have, like, uh, Rainbow Bite, Nosfu Rarity, Drinky Pie, Apple Drag, and, oh, the best one of all is a Twilight Sparkling. By the way, where did you, where did they get their their uh, their uh, little necklaces from? Like, they all have their, their own different necklaces. Twilight Rare. has one that looks weird. Rarities there. Can you really doubt it? Yeah, true that. <laughs> also, also their QD marks change. Yeah, I don't yeah. mind that because uh, if you look at uh, Fluttershy's QD mark, instead of three butterflies, it's three vampire, vampire bats. bats. Mm. Yeah, three vampires. So it does make sense. But rar- rarities is the most curious because I I can't tell what they are from the image, but they look like spools, three red spools of thread. You know what I think? They, I think they are blood bugs. No, no. I, I think what it was going for is a gaping mouth of a vampire bat trying to bite. You know, when you see a vampire ah, bat opening the teeth yeah, and the and mouth. Yeah. I think that's what it's going for, but yeah. it didn't really work. 
No, it didn't. Because it does look like blood bugs. Yeah. Twilight is the most confusing one. It's just a Starburst with apple in the middle. Which, under the lighting, can look like an orange. Yep, yep. Yes, it can. Anyway. <laughs> Suddenly, she starts attacking the oranges, and the oranges are like, What did we ever do to you? We are not the ones he made in the town. Oh, wow. and, and Twilight is like, I don't care, I need citrus. <laughs> <laughs> but the, these next pages are a bit gruesome, actually, if, mm-hmm. a, a, bit, a bit grim dark, because they go around starting to drink the apples dry. Yeah, but before that, like the first panel for the next page, I see a G3 pony there. Oh, yeah, because Marion, the librarian, and the, the uh, PNN guy make a return. Mm-hmm. But then there's, what was her name, Mint something? Minty. Minty. Her name is Minty, Minty. yes. Minty Fresh? <laughs> When do I know her? I have a blind bag figure of her. Huh. Okay. Well, that's off that one problem. Well, anyway, so, they, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're sucking. Okay. First of all, what was the script writing session? Okay. We need our heroines to rescue the town. Well, what if we had them suck off all the, uh, <laughs> all the villains? What? <laughs> <laughs> with, with vampires. I mean, baked them vampires. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and the artists, the concept artists, they're like, oh, sorry, halfway there, sorry, can't stop. Woo, I cannot never upload this anywhere, or else husband is going to fire me. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, I, hey they, they, they're the ones who went there. Um, and imagine, the, imagine the reading session for this. The, the, the jokes may never end. Oh, wow. And as low taste as that joke was... It's still better than Twilight saying sparkling vampire. Hmm, those sound good together. No, they no, don't. No, they don't. <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, they, may I say that these panels, they might be fun or they might be entertaining or anything, but they are, they are a bit, eh, because the apples aren't really there and the ponies are just standing there in the, in the middle of the town. They are not really doing anything. Yeah. But the the only scene was in the previous page where Rarity was in all silhouette fighting. That was like, good. Yeah, that, that was good in terms of yeah. like that horror feeling. Yeah, that was good. But then they didn't capitalize on that. Like they should have shown each of the ponies doing something in terms of shadowy dark figure. Like the one we got here was like we can see them clearly. Like we got Rarity on top of there and trying to bite the apples. Twilight is making a silly joke. Rainbow Dash is just flying. And, um, what's this? Pinkie Pie is just hanging there. And Applejack is saying a very kind of philosophical thing, but I think it's kind of missed out in the scenario here. And then, probably the most disturbing thing in the line, mm-hmm. uh, when they go to rescue Good Apple and Spike, Good Apple says the locks still respond to apples only. And Pinky says, oh, I'm full of apples. Okay! <laughs> I don't know how to censor this show. Uh, you can't, so just roll with it. Because we can now talk about the Fatashazels. She's having a moment like the golems. Oh, it's so sweet. Shut up. <laughs> Oh, wow. this is an interesting concept. I do like it. Like, the first scene is just, like, Fluttershy looking like, oh, she's so kind, but I'm evil. But, mmm. <laughs> oh, well. But, so, the, I, I'm kind of confused because this is where the, the comic starts going weird with its tone. Because up until the the barn scene, the comic has been kind of like, okay, let's go, let's continue with the B, uh, with the B, C, uh, B movie kind of uh, uh, feel of the whole story. But this is when it starts going. This is when the the the, the clash between MLP FIM and B movie starts clashing, and the MLP FIM starts winning, which makes sense. It's a My Little Pony comic and all, but. It's kind of a letdown because they are like, oh no, wait a minute, we we have a way to to fix the the good apples. We know how to how to fix these guys. Um, but before that, like I'm looking at the fighting scene where after Flutterbat escapes, the ponies are find uh, the ponies were found out and the horde of apples are just trying to at- 
attack the ponies. But here, here's what kind of fails in terms of what can you do? Your only weapon is your mouth. And there's a horde of apples coming at you. So this is where I personally feel that this part fails a bit in terms of your limited set of skills. We are not talking about Dynasty Warrior here where you can just do a mass attack with a huge large <laughs> stick. So that would it's, have been it, cool. It's Pikmin with, fl- with fl- uh, Flutter Bottom Vampire Bats, yes. Yeah, so... And, and the Vampire Phonies can't fit them all in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, not going there. I have. Uh, <laughs> I'm going as well. <laughs> Actually, what, I've, what we forgot to mention is that these apples are naturally resistant to magic. Hmm. Uh, even though Twilight is still trying to use magic on them. Did they, did they mention that before? Yeah, it's in, is, that it's in issue one. Oh yeah, Luna was doing it. All right, and Twilight, but in here in issue two, Twilight's still trying to zap them. I think that's her instinct. True, and also the vampire bat magic. You know, who knows? It might do something different. But it doesn't take them. It doesn't take them long before they get overwhelmed by the apples, and then and Flutterbutt arrives, and that's where we are. That's that we reach to the part that I was talking before. The whole. We can turn these apples into good. Really? All I'm seeing is Fluttish Shy looking evil and saying get them. Like, and, oh my. And evil and awesome. I know. I, look at that. That is hardcore. This is why people need to respect the Shy. I know. Ah, oh. this is so difficult, guys. You have no idea. I've been here with two Flutter Shy fanboys. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, shut up, Norman. <laughs> No, but this is uh, this is the this is the the part of the comic that I think it kind of like breaks it for me. Uh, and I, I know it's personal. I know that I it's 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 a personal opinion and everything. But when they are talking about let's turn these all of these apples into good, let's be good. So it's like we have the all good versus evil switch going on. Mm-hmm. So when they are forming that that giant spike, uh, behemoth titan thing. Uh, good apple is like if you change me for bad apple, I can turn all of these good uh, bad apples into good apples. The, the, I I know I think they were going for the whole let's uh, le- the whole one apple spoils the bunch uh, mm-hmm. kind of thing. But all I'm saying is it's not that easy. This is a lot like the issue with a reform spell with the elements army just making someone good. You're basically taking ethics and boil it down to an on off switch. Now, we've seen the apples talk throughout this entire comic, and they each have their own minor personalities. Hey, don't be so sadist and the like. Mm -hmm. So they have independent thoughts. But this is trying to say that as a collective, they there's only one of two binary choices. You're either good or you're bad. Mm -hmm. So right off the bat, you're showing diversity of personality, but not diversity of of personal choice. Well, I do. I'm thinking of the... Uh, sorry, I'm thinking of a scenario in Mass Effect, you know, Legion, where they're making the vote and it comes down to, who was it? It was a split 50-50 and Shepard... No, not to... really. It wasn't It wasn't really split 50-50. In the, if you bring Mass Effect, you're going to have problems because I know about it more than you yeah, do. And I can I tell you, it wasn't, fi- it wasn't 50-50. They were all preferring to have the destruction uh, rather than the conversion when it came to changing the Geth from one alignment to another. They prefer to destroy the, ba- the Geth base rather than wipe their memories and convert them to their own beliefs. Mm-hmm. Uh, which in the end turned out to be the right option uh, in, in, Mass- in the, 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 the events that take place in Mass Effect 3. This is different. Mm-hmm. This is a, a one individual making an entire change for the whole community. So here's what I'm thinking here. Because, okay, you got the followers for the loud one. And you know how loud people are, right? When you bark a lot, people are just listening to you and you do follow them. Even though you have personality-wise, you still follow the big honcho. It's like a changeling. Changeling, I think they have their own personality, but they follow Chrysalis because she's the head honcho. And with the switch to Good Apple here, everybody's listening to the big head honcho now, which is going to be Good Apple. Mm. I don't know. Because if they are listening to Good Apple, that means that the rest of the apples don't have personalities and they don't have 
uh, uh, free will, and we have seen that they indeed do. They do have free will. We have seen them having their own conversations and they have their own personalities, at least a couple of them. And this is this is kind of like weird, especially when you compare to how they were acting at, up until this point. And okay, okay, fine, they are just, you know, apples. They have the personality of a vegetable. But... Fruit. It's a fruit. Fruit, fruit sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. This is kind of what, this is where the comic loses me. And then there's the scene where Twilight tries to take care of the meteor that caused this whole, or meteorite, that tried to cause this whole mess. She's taking negative magic into her. You could do so much with this. Ooh. Say, say that it left a lingering effect in her. Say that she's not herself mm-hmm. in later issues. That maybe in some way there's a little taint working its way through her spirit. Yeah, we, one could hope, one could hope. But uh, she seems to suffer no ill effects. So what they do is they take the meteorite and they send it up into the sky with Pinkie Pie's party cannon. Overpowered party cannon. With, with, How... Spike's, with Spike's magic-powered breath. Yes. <laughs> How does science work? Well, the, never mind. They take the meteorite, they throw it, they blast it off with the cannon, it explodes in fireworks. <laughs> this is enough... This is enough for uh, uh, the giant apple spike to be distracted that a rainbow dash flies through his chest, uh, changing one uh, bad apple for good apple. Good apple converts all of the apples into good, and they all ride happy into the distance onto, an all, uh, onto their own apple sanctuary, which gets concealed by magic. Mm-hmm. Convenient. Oh, so, more- this thing happened. We are never going to... Talk about it again. One Good. more thing I need to bring up. The balloon is back. Oh, yeah, and the balloon is back. You're right. Buy the balloon. Buy it. Buy it. <laughs> it's Twilight Sparkle's balloon. Except it's not. Uh, it's cherry It's cherry berries. Yeah, it's, ch- yeah, it's the, 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 one po- the one earth pony who wants to become a, a, a flyer, right? Hmm. Isn't she the one that was riding the helicopter as well? Yep. Yeah, the one who wants to be a flyer, but really is just natural selections, just gunning for her. <laughs> yes. So Celestia and Luna get to make an appearance. Yay. Yeah, which you think they have they would have appeared earlier because this is kind of their fault. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because they were they were the ones that took it out and they left the, the the meteorite there to cause this whole conflict. Well, they didn't leave it, but it was an un- unintended consequence. Mm-hmm. And that's that that that's where the what you were talking about uh, before, uh, Silver. That's when it comes out that good apple is a combination of the goodness in both Celestia and Luna, or at least that's what they say. Yeah, Celestia's trying to try trying to be humble, but then Celestia tries to set up this analogy, talking about the negative aspects of the main six, and that everyone has to work hard to overcome them. But the apples didn't work hard. They just have this binary choice. It undermines the moral. Mm, I true that, but I don't know. I mean, the whole situation here is yes, it's a one and two, it's a one and zero kind of situation. Be good or be bad. The little pony, sorry, the little apples, like those applelings, they didn't had kind, they didn't had a choice in the matter. Unless you're going for changeling mindset, then okay. Yes, you, that does seem to be the case. But other than that, they had personalities. They're like any other people. They're just listening to the higher ups' command. That's about it. For, for, I just feel like this this setup, this representation, doesn't work because the apples aren't a hive mind, mm. and I'm not sure I buy that the changelings are a hive mind or that they're anything but evil. Uh, ch- changeling is another topic that, if we were to bounce around, it's hard. We see them born out of toxic, toxicness, very evil kind of magic. So yeah, we have that. But is it Christmas fault for wanting to feed her changelings? Uh, we we shouldn't be talking about that. But this is the part of the, 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 the. Okay, if I was kind of like losing hope before, this kind of like sell the deal for me. But to me, this is like uh, okay. Have you guys watched Attack of the Killer Tomatoes? Oh, yeah. Oh, I've yes. seen the cartoons. H- have you watched uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space? No. Not that so much. No. Uh, I have seen okay, CR- but... CR's comparison. 
<laughs> uh, but you remember the morals of those two movies, right? The moral is, do not trust any killer tomato and do not trust any killer clown from outer space. <laughs> the, 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 there is no need for a moral on a B movie. And the way they were fabricating this and they were building this up was very B movie. I know I mentioned the B movie thing all the time, but this is the problem. I love B movies. I'm a sucker, haha, for B movies. And this had all the building blocks for it. You don't really need to throw a moral at the end. And I think this is the problem with, uh, the, 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 this is the advantage and the problem with this show is that you are following the, 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 the moral thing with every episode and with every comic. That's fine. But there has been a, this, there has been a few comics that didn't have a moral at the end. Like I, for the love of me, I cannot understand why what was the moral at the end of the reflections arc? Um, no. And I, and I cannot remember what was the moral on the the the, the King Sombra uh, Finship is Magic issue. I don't remember the morals. Of that. So th- we can have comics that don't have morals. Why can't we have a comic where it's just fun? And this comic felt like it. And then it goes all super serious, faithful. This is very important for the kids. We need to keep it in mind. So it's like. No, you don't really need to do that. Why did you do that? Not sure. J- 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 just me. Just me. I don't know. Well, I, 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 I can, I can name you the morals from Reflections and Sombra Arc. Reflections. Ooh. Kids, don't go j- dimension hump- hopping. <laughs> and, and, uh, Sombra Arc, don't listen to dark talking crystals. I think that's very important <laughs> that kids know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> But you got me! You got me, Silver! You understand where I'm going for is that sometimes you don't need to have a speech at the end. You don't need to have a spiel saying, this is what we... St- what have we learned today? You know, like, you're in the C- you're in watching the CBS and suddenly you need to listen to the the, the, the... the lesson that kids have taken from all of this and you're like, no, we don't need this. Why do you have the need to give it... to, to give us this? Because of me. reasons... Because of reasons. But, hey, me. well, I think final thoughts is in order about now. Yeah, let's go with final thoughts. Go for it, Silver. Well, like I say, it started out being so serious. Uh, taking this invasion that is meant to be absurd uh, seriously, and that first part just lost me. The second part was more enjoyable because the ponies were proactive. They were tackling this problem head on. But they're still taking it really seriously. It's no longer meant to be a comedy. Now it's more horror-oriented. But even then, they don't play up the horror that much. This comic did everything by half measures. And as there was, and then to try and present the idea of choosing between good and bad, when really the apples never had a choice. You swap, you swap the core, and that's it. No one else has a choice. So. It, as a as a comedy, it doesn't really fly. As a horror, it doesn't really scare. As a moral, it really defeats itself. The moral, like not having a choice. Don't you think that in war, your soldiers don't have a choice at all? They have a choice oh, on no, how they man, behave. Don't go there. I'm just asking don't because there. knowing our commenters, probably they bring it up. They have a choice on. They actually have a choice to defy orders or to interpret them differently. Uh, that's actually a very common theme in a lot of war stories. Orders are based on interpretation. These apples are just wholeheartedly, they even say in their dialogue, just eat, looking forward to conquering. Mm. And then, oh, good apples to charge now. Now we are good. <laughs> uh, alrighty then, alrighty then. It's never that easy. I, I know, like, in life it's never that simple, but in fiction, it's like a white. <laughs> Uh, it's hard it to can play. be it can be complex it can be complex in fiction as well. Yeah, I know, but in this, like what we're reviewing, it's it it should be easy. It's black and white. If you're going to play around with grays, it's not going to be easy. As for me, this comic here is pretty interesting. Like, I do like what they what they've done in the first part, where everything is bleak, everything is super serious, and I wish they kept that tone throughout the whole series like throughout the whole issue but the whole thing near the end of chapter one was a bit iffy in terms of okay the only way we're trying to win this is to get Fluttershy into a bat awesome art but kind of cheap 
And in issue two with the whole horror movie, it's, it's half-hearted. Like, they wanted to do a war movie, like how our fandom likes to do with the griffins and ponies at war. Yeah, I've heard a lot of fanfictions. They're really good in terms of how they portray war, but they don't have Hasbro breathing down their necks. So that's cool. Like I said, in the second part, horror, they didn't push horror to the limits. I, I felt cheated. I, I would love to see the ponies going all out. Very evil-like. Like that one scene with Rarity. That's the only scene I get. Others I don't. So it's like, oh, that's sad. And the big kaiju fight in the end. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I wish for better things now. Well, overall, it's okay. Oh my god. Well, I, I think, I think you, you and I and me, uh, you and I and me, yeah, right. <laughs> you and I and Silver and everybody who reads the comics and who is invested in the TV show, we're respecting big of these guys. And we know that they are capable of, like, you know, uh, having an episode with, uh, with a moral at the end, while also having fun and uh, having some horror elements to it. Uh, you can say everything you want about bats and everything, but I think that was, uh, that was one of the best episodes of season four. It was fun. It was entertaining. It had a good moral at the end, and it had that horror element going for itself. Uh, it it did introduce us to Apple to to Flutterbad, and that was good. Mm. This comic could have this this comic arc could have been a bit of an extension of that, and in some parts it is, but it kind of like it it feels like for everything that it's doing right, at the same time, is doing a halfway, that it doesn't take it far enough. It doesn't take the whole step. It's like, ah, it feels like I'm going to do No. I am going to do No. I'm going to do this. No. It's like, so it's like, it, at the end of the comic, at the end, it feels, I feel like burnout. out. I feel tired. I'm like, oh, please, can, can I be done reading this? Is it over? Oh, it's still going. Oh, for the love of everything. Can, it, can this stop? But No. And that's that's what kills me. I love Tom Taylor. I love Tony Flicks. I think that the 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 my, the, the French whatever they did with Fluttershy and Sekora was fantastic. I love I, I I love the feel of that one. I think Tom Taylor is a good writer. He is the one who did the micro of Twilight Sparkle, and I think he has a knack for this kind of thing. But this feels more like a comic that had a lot of rewrites, and that had a lot of indications going. Yeah, guys, look. We know that you want to put that scene where uh, they, uh, they all together they they suck the juice out of an apple and they leave his dry corpse hanging <laughs> on three apple acres. I know that you guys want to do that, but you cannot do that. This is a comic for kids. You you you, you need to change that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't did did you guys also feel the hands of? Did you guys feel also also feel the hands of corporate? Telling these guys to fix the to fix the story and make it more family friendly, or am I just the only one? I think you're the only one, man, because I didn't felt that. Like I think, for me personally, I felt that the artists here knew the limitations on what they can and cannot do, and it also goes to the writer again. So maybe the writing is okay, and maybe Tom Sailor knew how to tone it down and push it back up where it's needed, but overall, it felt half-hearted. The art, well, uh, it's based on what Tom Sailor wrote. That's about it. I have only felt the corporate hand when they, in the Sombra comic, where they say, oh, I, I turned her to Crystal and shattered her, but she's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I turned into Crystal and shattered and spread all over Equestria, but not dead. Well, so having all the sentient body parts all over the place is a lot better than actually healing the character. Well, well, mm. here's the thing. Remember in season three where Sombra is blasted into a million pieces and the only thing left was his horn? It's coming back. <laughs> Shut up, I haven't read the comic yet. No, I'm just talking about what we saw in the Finship with Magic. Remember that one? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, that is one other thing that worked against this comic. I, the next arc is the, is the first four-parter in quite some time. Oh, yeah. And I was actually very eager to see how it would start, so I was champing at the bit, and this two-parter was just an unwelcome delay to that. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the, this one and the previous one, it felt like padding. 
And once again, this feels like padding. And this comic kind of hurts to me because I was like, like I said, I have a bunch of B movies. I am a sucker for B movies. And this kind of disappointed me. Well, to be honest, this is not the first time that they did padding because previously we got the pirate arc, which you did review, Silver, on your channel. Awesome review, by the way, for Pirate Day. And Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're kissing up to him now, Norman. <laughs> hey, I'm just plugging. It was an awesome review. Please don't kill me. <laughs> uh, allow him to continue. <laughs> and also, yes, boss. Yes, boss. <laughs> and also we got the bookworm arc. So we have two kind of okay arcs in the middle before we got the reflections arc. So uh, to me, it's been a while and padding for the series is there. It's been there for a while. If you take a look, see at the very beginning, we had, well, the return of Queen Chrysalis and then Nightmare Rarity. Um, two paddings, the Zen and, uh, the art of uh, the Zen of R and yeah, Zebo repairing. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know where you're going for. It's like, yeah, it is true that this comic series, the main comic series at, the, at least, it works in uh, four parters and then two parters, where you have the Return of Queen Chrysalis and then you have the Nightmare Rarity arc, then you have Zen and the Art of Gazebo Repair, followed by Nay Everything. Uh, but I wouldn't consider Nay Everything and Zen and the Art of Gazebo Repair to be fillers. Uh, the same way that I wouldn't consider the uh, the root of the problem and the good of the bad and the ponies to be filler either. Um, the the pirate arc and the bookworm arc felt like padding, perhaps the bookworm arc more than the pirate arc, at least for me. But it, it is true that in between four parters, we do have a bit of filler going on. Well, I think it's something like in a Naruto show where you have awesome fights and you have something that follows the manga. But sometimes you get those weird episodes where Naruto is in a race for ramen. So, yeah, you'll have that in between. So, the comics, well, it felt like that too. Well, that's kind of how it works in the TV show. Well, for ponies or Naruto? I'm confused right now. For ponies. Oh, for right. ponies, because right. you have your two parters followed by a, a slice of life stories. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. or epic adventures that last one episode. Or any friendship problem that could be dealt with in 30 minutes or less. Yeah. Exactly. It'll only take half an hour. Yeah. Thank you, Sudi. Well, uh... I love a good meta humor. I know. Same here. Same here. But yeah. anyway. Especially when it's subtle and not in your face. Mm, true that. But anyway, with that out of the way, what are we going to do next week, James? Um, well, I think next week we're going to have to review whatever our lovely viewers tell us to review because the polls should be already out and the, the, the tallying up of the votes should be already done, right? Mm-hmm. True that. And, well, it's going to be insert vote panel here. <laughs> now, it's going to be something awesome. I, I I know our fans would just love whatever we do, but, hey, it's this is the first time that we're interacting with them, so we'll have to wait and see. Review Fifty Shades of Grey! No! no! <laughs> <laughs> Only if I can review it like Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> uh, uh, hmm. <laughs> yes, actually, yes, yes. No. I'm okay with this. Let's do that. No, I don't want to. I don't want to see the movie. No. You know what? We should. Ah, uh, never mind. Then we'll talk about this off the air. But oh god, uh, we'll we'll see what we have to do. We'll see what we have to do. But anyway, uh, take us out, James. Uh, and I have to take you out for dinner? No, sorry. You're, sorry, Norman, you're not my type. <laughs> I need to find a good segue to get us out of here. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for watching this. Thank you guys so much for paying attention to us because, uh, please pay attention to us. We have nothing better to do with our lives now. <laughs> uh, thank you, seriously, uh, for watching the show because if it wasn't for you, Uh, We wouldn't be here, and we wouldn't be able to do the things that we do. So thank you. Thank you so much for being there. And uh, we'll see you all on the next episode. This has been James Cork. And I am Norman Sanzo. And what is a pony? A miserable pile of friendships. Play the box now, Silver. Play the box now. Ah, oh, it's performance anxiety. <laughs> oh no, it's nervous. <laughs> yes, somebody it's dead. Take the juice out of it. It's dead, Jim. 
Oh, no. You need a new sound box. Or else we are not going to be able to finish the show. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, come on. You guys are doing great with your music. Oh, anyway. <laughs> we'll see you guys. Oh, see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.